in this dojo, does it? No, Jason! What's going on guys and welcome back to another one. In today's video I'm going to be showing you an in-depth tutorial about movement. I'm going to be demonstrating this on the control pad and here's what else is coming up in today's show. First of all we're going to be going over how to evade bullets. We expose players for being raging sex cases. BDS still completely infatuated with me. We have full permission from the posse draw to expose their players starting with Sensei. Okay, I've just hooked everything up. As some of you guys are aware, I use standard FPS. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over a few basic moves. Now, if you start in the crab position um, like this, now you can fight like this as I've um, demonstrated in other videos. As you can see, when we pick up the pace a little bit, you can easily go left, right, left, right, and forwards and backwards. Again, this is a swift movement for avoiding headshots. Now, everyone should be aware of the trick where you lead your opponent towards you and make out your running in the opposite direction then you spin and shoot them in the face. So first of all, what we're gonna do here is very similar, but the only difference there's gonna be is double tapping really fast on the A button. Now, as you guys can see, the movement is completely different. You can see the animation is doing something different than what you've seen before. And this is good news because you are less likely to take a headshot. <laughs> okay, now I know that some of you are gonna be asking, why is it less likely that you're gonna take a headshot here is it because you're moving rapidly fast? That is sort of true, but no. What it actually comes down to is the more you can distort your animation on your character, the less likelihood you're actually going to take a headshot. Now, as I've explained before, none of us are playing at the exact same moment. And based upon that principle, the more you can distort your own animation, the less likelihood you'll take the same headshot. Now, hopefully, everyone understands that principle. You can see me doing it on the control pad. Now, let's go to McFarland's. Okay, if everyone gets back in the crab position, um, you don't need to move fast. All we're gonna do is practice coming up and down on the shot. So take the shot, come straight back down again. Remember you're double tapping on the A button. The difference here when pressing the A button is we're controlling coming up and down. We're not just pressing it rapidly, we're actually controlling it. This time we're gonna try it again, but move faster in the crouch position. Now, I'm not expecting everyone to get this on their first try. That's why this is elite training. It's for high level players that already know their way around. As you can see, using the fence here, I'm coming up and down and aiming over the top of the fence. Again, this is a drill that we run all the time. Now, 
Now we're gonna put those two things together and we're gonna come up, take the shot back down again and we're gonna repeat. Now another fun way of doing this is getting a few people together. I understand that some of you guys want to play by yourselves. Um, I like to play sometimes and train by myself. Um, but if you get a few people together, position them around the box. Um, and what you basically do, you play this game called Peekaboo. So just to clarify how you would start this game because without standing up how can you go for your opponent. Again discussed in earlier videos you can use something called a speed paint where you angle the shot to hit them in the head. You can shoot through the fence providing you're standing up on the shot. When I do this the other player is blatantly going to go for me so I just reposition stand up and shoot him in the head. Okay, it's time to move on to a part of the show that I've never actually covered before. We need to talk about a player called Sonny Montana. Now, there's a multitude of players that want this guy exposed. Reason being, <sighs> he's been getting a little bit fruity. Now, normally, and as an example, when you meet a female, the first thing you do is ask, are you single? Now, providing she is single, the next stage would be asking if she'd like to get to know you. However, that's not what Sonny Montana here did. Let's take a look at what Sonny did. Mr. Bombastic. We want is a bombastic, romantic, fantastic lover. Shaggy. Mr. Lover, lover. Mm. Now, Mr. Lover, lover. <laughs> Girl. Mr. Lover, lover. Mm. Now, Mr. Lover, lover. She call me Mr. Bombastic, tell me fantastic Touch me on me box, she says I'm uh, Mr. Ro Romantic, call me fantastic Touch me on me box, she says I'm uh, Okay, we're going to take a look at angles here and most high level players know how to switch the camera view. By knowing how to use both angles, it will give you a clear advantage over your opponents. Someone can stand there spinning as much as they want, but with this move you'll crush them every single time. Okay, so as part of this training drill, we're gonna emphasize both angles and there's a gate in the middle. So we're just gonna come up, aim, and then down again, then back to the angle. Now, you really wanna keep this movement swift and not make any mistakes while executing it. And this is why McFarland's makes for such a fantastic training ground. There's just so many things that you can use to enhance your gameplay. For example, here I'm stopping at each side of the gate. I can pop up in the middle of the gate again and keep the movement going. Okay, we're now moving on to talk about a player called Nova Fatum. Never heard of this player before. Maybe you guys can help me out in the comment section below. Of course, I was in a takeover series on the Dandies team, minding my own business. Then I received a few messages from players complaining about the fact that this player was using a hat reattach. Now, conveniently, 10 minutes later, 
I got a message saying that he's camping inside of a bush, reattaching his hat, and he's trying to spawn kill everyone on the Dandies team. Now, that might work on other players, but it's not going to work on me. So I took it upon myself to farm this player and make an example of this cheat. Now, at the beginning of the game, you can see I've just delivered one of my own bags. Obviously, I've then come back through and this guy is camping in the bush the other side of this bridge. All he's doing is reattaching his hat and trying to call himself better than other players. Now, do I have a problem with that? Yeah, I've got a big f***ing problem with that because there's other players playing in the session and you're using a hat reattachment to sort of gain power over other players just to call yourselves better. So what I did is I decided not to use a hat reattach because I don't play like that. But I started using the same tactics that he was using and it was one-sided. After I killed him, I knew he was going to come back um, because that was his motive. It wasn't going for the game objective. So I made him my game objective and I just continuously destroyed him over and over again. Now, I've got a question for Mr. Nova. As a high-level player that thinks he's the best player on Red Dead Online, why from this position are you running to your right why are you not running forwards towards where the tree is and taking your shotgun out? Clearly that would be the most appropriate move here, but again, you think that you're something that you're not. So what I'm gonna do is after this tutorial, I'm gonna send you an invoice and then you can get good and then you can play on my level. Now in a minute, I'm gonna be showing you guys why I chose to expose this player. But for now, again, we've got him in a similar situation where he's not taking cover. I've shot him in the face directly under his hat. Again, he just does not have the experience. I mean, in my opinion, this is just another salty tryhard that uses as much exploits as he can to fool players into believing he's better than what he is. And if you look at how I'm actually beating him up, I'm not doing anything special. I'm using basic standard moves and he's just falling for it. So this player said that he got a kill on me, so I asked him to send me the clip. So he sent me the clip and yes he got one kill on me in the match before and if you look very closely you'll see there's his hair clip where he's reattaching his hat so personally i think that was a pretty dumb thing to do um so congratulations but targeting me has quite clearly got you farmed and as per usual these players when they can't get the better of me they get toxic this player then sends me a message stating that he's going to get 450 people to have my channel eliminated by reporting me okay um well this was like a week ago now so i'm still waiting for that to happen i have explained to youtube that you don't actually know 450 people you don't even know four people now this is actually pretty interesting because this player states here that i talk negatively about other players i'm gonna make it clear for everybody we speak negatively about trolls bullies griefers and cheaters if you think that it's acceptable to cheat i think it's acceptable to expose it let me just point something out to you every time i mention somebody i'm actually mentioning their gamer tag not the person you're going to find it incredibly difficult to report someone for talking about gamer tags now it's only taken the haters out there a whole year to figure that out now if everybody concentrates on this rock right in front of me i'm on the edge of a hilltop so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and down on the shot. I'm going to make sure my opponent can't see me. Every time I press L2 or LT, it's going to lock right on the opponent. And all I'm doing is coming up and down. Now, as you can see here, I don't need to use a hair clip. I don't use hat reattachment. That's for push players that want to make out they're better than what they actually are. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use the bush. And for the players that are using hat reattach, all they're gonna do is run back in the bush, put their hat back on and run back out again and carry on shooting you. So if you're outside the bush and you're trying to um, lock on someone that's inside the bush, you're not gonna be able to. Your best chance is to leave dead eye paint on, but by doing that, you're making yourself an easy target. Now, if you've just approached the bush, you have a full lock on on everyone outside. They're gonna find it incredibly difficult to deal with you and it's your advantage. My opinion here though, is I like to push players across the map. So I don't wanna camp inside the bush. I'll use the bush temporarily and then I'll move forwards from there. Now, the next player we're going to be talking about here is only PvP Cat himself. Yeah. Reasons being is someone dropped a comment 
on my last video talking about how the GL posse was spawning in and basically farming him throughout his live stream. Now, Mr. Cat, I've got some very important advice for you. What we do here at Destiny Shoots is we take pride in putting foot to up and beating the shit out of egotistical players that seek to grief other players. So first things first, strengthen your defenses. Yeah. Never do a live stream using your main account so every single player can see that you're online. For example, I know that the Xbox community is not very big. That means the second you're doing your live stream, all I need to do is go from one free roam lobby to another until I find your character's name. I'll then take a look at your live stream and see whereabouts you are on the map and then I'd farm you. This is why we use Smurf accounts. And as for the GL Posse, if you need a history lesson, they're one of the most notorious cheaters that this game has ever seen. There's no Posse that's more prolific than what these guys are. If you need some extra help tightening up your security, all you need to do is ask. We offer a free service. And second to the point, how many players out there would line up to take on the GL Posse using the same exploits as what they do? They'd never step foot in the game. Now, just to make an example of this situation, if there are any other players out there that are being spawned in on, griefed or bullied, then send me a message. There's nothing that we enjoy more than bullying bullies. Boom, 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 okay, on to the next player. Now, let's talk about PIB car because this is actually getting quite funny. Now, sometimes, guys, players try to use my name to get more clout or to boost their profile. The sad thing about this player is he's lost more CVCs than he's actually won. Amongst the CVC community, he's known as an embarrassment. There's no surprise that he tries to go around mentioning my name in every single sentence possible to actually boost his profile. Now, his friends have told me that every time he mentions my name, he gets excited about it. So there's clearly something wrong with this player. So when word got back to me that this player was saying how he farmed me and all this made up bullshit, Obviously, I'm going to go and challenge that player. I'm going to ask for the scorecard. I'm going to ask for the clips. That's exactly what I done here. And guess what? He couldn't quite manage with all this evidence against me to provide one clip, one scorecard, absolutely nothing. This guy is a crazy, crazy joker. Now, let this be a lesson to other players. If you want to go around talking smack about Destiny and all this made up bullshit, expect that I'm going to challenge you. The second you fall short of your theory, I'm gonna embarrass you. Listen, bro, you've clearly got daddy issues. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my God, stop fucking lying. And as for PIB card bringing Archangel into the conversation, let me tell you about Archangel. If you've got something to say, bro, yeah, come and say it to my face. Stop saying it behind my back. This is a guy that was begging to come in my session, showed up unannounced just to get clout and try and boost his own profile, hardly made any kills on me whatsoever, lost the majority of matches to me in TakeOver. Listen, you didn't do much, you just annoyed everyone with your high-pitched voice. I mean, what is that about? Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Why? Oh my God, stop fucking lying. Okay, now we move on to exposing Sensei. Now, the reasons why we're exposing Sensei is pretty simple. He's allowed a member of his posse to cheat the ass out of other players in a showdown. Now, the player that was cheating was Zizan. He was repeatedly blowing himself up. For the purpose of this video, we have Octizzi, who is Zizum. So we then nicknamed him Jism. So we're going to give this member of Draw a new nickname as well. We're calling him Jiz number two. Now I decided to challenge this player because there are members of their posse that have appeared in previous videos. Any players that go on to cheat, I'm going to challenge straight away. Jiz2 here decided to speak on behalf of his entire posse. He basically gave me an open invitation to say what I want about this posse and share my previous experiences farming Sensei. To be honest, I've actually farmed every single member of Draw, but for now, we're going to start with Sensei. Now, I'm going to stick to the rules that Zizan told me in my inbox, and I'm happy to share these screenshots with everyone else. That is, providing I put up this IG address, it's absolutely fine, I can say what I want. So, from week to week, I'm going to be showing you guys how I've farmed every single member of Draw, including that little jarhead, Rubei, who is my personal little 
So all members of Draw, you've got Zizan to thank for this. Now, Sensei has a reputation for beating hundreds of players on the island by using certain exploits. And that's absolutely fine if everyone's consenting to that, not my problem. But for your information, before he was Sensei, he was Thug Life. This is a name and reputation that he's never gonna get away from. So Sensei, let's explain to the community what I used to do to you. Man, I used to steal this little player's lunch money on a daily basis. All exploits used in all of these posse battles were consented between both posses. Let's take a look at some clips. Okay, what have we got here? Man, I'm not even in Deadeye, yet you've got a face full of the back of my gun. Again, same thing. Look, this, this guy is in Deadeye. I'm not even in Deadeye. You can't even shoot me in the face, bro. What's going on now? Man, that's what we call laying the smackdown, bro. Oh, this is looking like a two versus one on Destiny, man. What's up with that? Man, you both just been wrapped up. What's going on there, bro? Sensei, talk us through it. Come on, bro. It's lunch money time, man. What are you doing? Bosh. Man, are you guys seeing that XP go up? Man, this guy's got no idea how to take on a slippery fighter, man. That is embarrassing. Oh, man, what's this? He's killed himself. Wow. Oh, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where he started trying to bring the fight to me. Let's see what happens here. Oh man, look at that. Sensei's running away from destiny. I'm not being funny. This is not even my PIB. This is what I'm talking about. Skill levels are completely different with one trick ponies. For some of you guys that have been with me for quite a long time, you'll know that I never even switched to PIB until I reached level 300. So I was an absolute expert in slippery. Um, players didn't have nothing on me. Um, I used to clean house in every posse battle I went in. As you can see, Sensei here, he can't scope for shit. Let's see what happens when Destiny pulls out his Carcano. Hello, one tap. I mean, this is no secret to Sensei. He already knows you'd have to be an absolute idiot to scope with me. Um, and that's what you see in here. I'm clearly using Neville without when your accuracy needs to be better than that. And this is what happens when he comes back for more. Yeah, this is definitely another two on one. Let's see what he's got this time. There goes your BFF. Bro, don't do it. Don't do it. This is just proof that when you take a player's overall entirety and not just one style of fighting, you can see who the stronger players are. So what we'll do is we'll pause it there. I'm gonna save all the rest of the footage. We've also got some PIB fights um, that you saw earlier on. And as I stated before, if you're happy not to take any accountability, I'm happy to put all of this out there. Please do remember to thank your brother, Jizen, for giving me full permission um, to be able to do this for the community. This is the one main reason that no CVC player wants to play me in any match outside of PIB. Unlike certain delusional CVC players that because they know 15% of the game, they think that makes them the best players in Red Dead. Okay, let's talk about BDS. Now, don't laugh anybody, give them a chance. They're not that bad. Okay, actually they are that bad, but give them a chance anyway. Now, for some of you guys that don't know BDS on the Xbox platform, they're now chasing me for clout, so I'm gonna give them the clout that they deserve. Now, they are absolutely notorious for being just some weird laggy players, like weird laggy players. 
but first of all let's talk about Venus because he's literally the weakest member of BDS. Now listen, I completely understand Venus. You've completely been destroyed by me. That's absolutely fine. You haven't even killed me in probably about three months. But as you know, you did come quite close to winning a couple of days ago. I ended up killing you just before the bell. Now, if you would have got the kill on me, it could have pushed this maybe into sudden death and you would have got your kicked. But unfortunately, I smacked you on the bell. You have to feel physically sick that you can't beat me in one showdown, bro. Now, if I beat you, Venus, in over 30 showdowns now, plus a CVC, I'm not being funny, dude, but you'd have to win 30 matches against me just to say that you're even. Do you kind of get where I'm going with this? It's not gonna happen, bro. You're right up there with all the players that get a kill on me and then declare themselves the best players in Red Dead Online because you got a kill on me. But question being, did you beat me in the showdown? Have you consistently beat me? If the answer's no, then f prior to someone else. Now let's talk about the other BDS player that's really, really upset with me. We're talking king of the butt hurt players. I'm talking about BDS lie. Now bro, listen, it's not my fault I smacked you 5-1. Is it my fault? It's not my fault, is it? You're the one that got clapped that many times. Now, just before we talk any more about this player, he has made a statement to us. It reads that the hat reattach is skill and it's not a cheat. So I'm not being funny, but when you go into a shootout and you're reattaching your hat against players that are not reattaching their hat because it's a glitch that should be patched, you're basically saying that that's skill. From my point of view, that's one of the weakest things I've ever heard. Now, we played in a couple of shootouts with BDS um, two days ago, and they won absolutely nothing. Now, watch this by this BDS player. Um, I believe this is uh, Anuki. Now, you can see I've just shot his hat off his head. So where is this skilled BDS player going? Now I've just shot the hat off of his head. He's fucking running away from me. So as I said just a minute ago, Lie BDS says that this is skill, is it? It looks like cowardly play from my position. So I've had to chase this player down and shoot him three flush times in the head for him to die and that's skill. So just to sum this up, hat reattach plus $2 laggy internet plus not winning on any scoreboard whatsoever equals the best players on Red Dead. I don't think so. Now, when I say these players are desperate to beat me, this is how desperate they are. So we're all in a shootout. Some of the BDS members are hitting us with E-rounds and incendiaries, and they're trying to do that while Venus tries to go for the win. But it didn't work out for you guys, did it? Because then I turned around to everyone else and said, if they're gonna use E-rounds, we're using E-rounds. Now, if some of you guys don't quite understand how it works, if a posse E-rounds you, basically it's a sign of defeat. Um, go right ahead, switch to E-rounds, fight fire with fire, try not to hit any of the other players that have got nothing to do with it. Just hit the weak players like BDS. Man, is this guy sitting down or standing up? Look at the state of his internet. Now, according to Venus BDS, he said, I clipped you using an E-round. Well, yeah, of course you did. See, again, for dum-dums that don't quite understand, if you hit me with an E-round to try to f score up, I'm gonna hit you with E-rounds. It's called the rules of the game. This is coming from the same posse that say, it's skill to use a hat reattach glitch on players that are not using it, but it's not okay to use an E-round in retaliation. Are you completely stupid or just completely retarded? So BDS liar, do you want to talk us through what's going on here? Oh, you're getting clapped by me and you're coming in fourth position again. Congratulations. So BDS liar, if you ever want to compare scorecards, I'm happy to do that with you if you want me to embarrass you. Simple. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. In the next Elite Players training, we're going to be focusing on Slippery, 
we're going to continue exposing draw, especially the players I've been smacking lately. But until then, I'll see you all in the next video.